How is it? Oh wow, Alvarez broke his hand. That's a killer. Killer injury there for the Tigers. I was looking to see if Jordan would be home run derby eligible, but he's not. He actually is tied for third, but and no place to to be there. Defanio and Joshua both in the National League now. Crazy that they both are. Oh. Gosh, is the one I'm a bit more of a fan of. But they both bat and left. It's cool. But anyway. Getting going on the video. We just came off the draft. Looking at all star votes. You got Bobby Witt Jr. in there. Jordan Alvarez makes it as a starter. You got Ronald Acuna. Man, the AL looks really stacked, man. Hunter Brown didn't quite make the cut. Casey Mize, he don't think he made the cut either. Jack Avery, a rule five pickup. Becoming a stud reliever. January was getting votes, which is kind of amazing to me. Johan Durana, he did make all-star. He will be an all-star. Freddie Furman did not make the cut. Kyle Teal, man, you, you should have been an all-star. I don't know what they don't see in you. You're an MVP candidate. But anyway, first base. We traded our guy away, and Vinny, he's, he's actually getting to go pretty good. It's up to 258 now. Second base, we don't really have a guy here. Yeah, Rise is not having that kind of year yet. It's up to 240, though. Third base. Not Mikel Garcia's year, even though he's hit almost a career high in home runs already. Bobby Witt, well-deserving. What a bounce back year from him. Uh, we've hit him higher in the lineup, and it's worked. And he's almost got as many doubles as last year. He's about to beat his home runs. Definitely seeing some great production from him. Very happy that he's getting back on track. Alvarez makes it as a left fielder. Quan makes it. Of course, Stephen Quan is an all-star one, isn't he? He's a very good baseball player. One of my favorites, for sure. Center field. Jake McCarthy, what a year. 308. Dylan Carlson. Frank Grisham, man. If I ever made a franchise again, maybe next year I'll look to get Grisham. He's kind of an interesting player. Arson Judge down here. I'm just kidding. Aaron Judge. 277 for Ispo. Pretty impressive. 343 slug. It's not driving in the runs, but... Oh, there's Gavin Cross. I'm like, who do we have at center field? Because I'm confused. Everson Pereira went up in potential. I guess. Crossy. 255. With nine dinglings. Dominic Fletcher up to an 88 overall. He has really become an impressive player these past couple of years for Cleveland, man. I think he got traded there and got traded in a down year and he's just became one of the best on-base players in the league. Langford I'd love to trade for Langford, but it's just not, it's not right. You got the Rangers way out of, the rank 28th? What is wrong with them? I want to check their roster out now. 
I mean, they are kind of declining at a, at a pretty good pace. A down year for Seeger after he had 46 bombs. I don't even think he's having a down year at all. Adelise Garcia. Interesting to see him struggle. It's obviously the pitching. It's not the best. That glider never really developed. Kind of sad to see there. But let's get it going. And I don't know what's up with the minor league all-star game, but it's just... It's nowhere to be found. And with Bobby Witt and Jordan both... What? Oh, I was going to say, where's Bobby Witt? But well, there he is. I think I'll get into the game and get some swings in with with Alvarez and Witt. And we'll see what we can do. I kind of, I think I skipped the All-Star game a year ago, and I think it's time to get some swings in. I haven't played the game in a couple of days. Been kind of just relaxing. I always work. Never. Seems like I never have time to do anything when I get home and I gotta pick and choose. Do I wanna play the game? Do I wanna take care of all my things I gotta take care of? Like, you know, clothes and just all types of stupid crap, you know. Never have time to play the game that much right now. The way work is set up, but did get to enjoy the MLB draft when I was at work today. Some interesting players got picked. Very excited for a lot of teams. You know, I don't have everybody remembered in my head, but I like what the Royals did with the two-way kid. The switch hitting, the switch throwing pitcher is very intriguing. He can really become a thing. I like the kid Detroit drafted. I think he's got good power upside and he can play along with Max Clark, you know, kind of help the future of your team. Who the heck is that? What are these jerseys, by the way? Are they, have they always been this bad? Is that what they look like this year? Out of the Cunha Jr. Just South Free Like, who the heck was that guy? And here's Shane Bieber. The Dodger pitcher, and he has been just as good for them as he was for Cleveland. Ow. Gonna move ahead a double put a runner in scoring position against Beaver. We haven't seen Beaver since the ALCS. Oh my God! Oh no! almost didn't make it, and that was the worst swing of my life. That's the slider, but a stupid swing nonetheless. Oh, come on, that's the one right there. A little bit late, though. I'm probably about to punch out here. Yeah, if he punches me out, so... Good stuff from Beaver, worse stuff from me. Make your Rodon look like a bag of trash. And no, I don't want to play as Devers. And Devers does what I couldn't do. So, 2 to nothing, American League. And Jeffers. Did Jeffers get traded? team is Jeffers on? Oh, he's on Seattle. I'm stupid. I don't know why I thought Seattle was in the National League for a minute. I'm just out of my mind. Here's Colt Keith getting a chance to hit. It's a single and Bobby Witt next against Beaver. Let's see if we can do better on this side of the plate seeing him. Oh, right down the middle. How do we miss that? A little bit out in front.
Oh, come on, man. A cutter. We couldn't hit that. Oh, missed on the best two pitches we might see all game. Oh, that's low. That's a ball. I like that pitch right there. That was it made me think about it for a minute. And a punch out, high fastball. I hope you don't just strike out to the man. And the National League making a little four, bit of a four, run here. Ten. And they take the lead off of Cal Riley's home run. Is Logan Gilbert and Chinola is on second base again. And we know Gilbert likes to pound the zone, so we might be able to get one here. Right to the shifted shortstop, and the play is made. A home run for Friedrich, and another for Lewis. Grayson Rodriguez getting shelled. Gives up two more runs. In comes Nelson Gibbons. Another hit in the National League for center. They are whooping us. Nine to three. They spotted us three runs, and they scored nine straight. Here's Mackenzie Gore pitching. And Witt gets a hold of that one, but not quite enough. And we just got doubled up because I hit the LB button. Oh, well. At least it's just an exhibition game. Can't get frustrated here. Three. Three. Out. Now pitching for the next Three. Three. Number Out. 19. Out. No, sir. Yeah. Now, Paddock wasn't pitching three. sooner. Three. Number 20. Three. Chris. Here's Alvarez now against the new pitcher, the Ranger team. Suarez, the left handed thrower. Ranger Suarez. Huck. No balls, one strike. And a sinker in there for strike two. Oh, two. That one tapped to a second, and Jordan oh. is probably not going to get a hit today. Why do I keep hitting that button? And making a little bit of a comeback here. Nine to five now. Jeff Combs in the game. Here's Whip to lead it off against Alexis Diaz. Diaz still a good pitcher. Ball. One out. On the ground the first and unable oh. to get the one hit. Ow. Ow. That's ball four. Ow. Three. Three. And we kind of cheated the system there to get another at bat against Alvarado, who is disgusting at 95 overall. He is a gross pitcher. Maybe we should have just let Alvarez get subbed out. And looks like Alvarado is going to have his way with him, too. And we struck out again. I'm 
just I don't even know why I played the game right now. Cause that is just a poor way of knowing what we can do. Let me just do this. Oh, they kept winning the game and he actually got a hit. And the NL our stars win in a 9-6 game. We score three, they score nine, we score three more, but obviously they win off of that. And good to see some of our players making the game, but not any way to show um up. And signing draft picks, which Always got to wonder if you can afford them all. And we get the real good one off the rip. So no struggle there. You got Ramos here. He declines, which is fair. Oh wow, he won. Whatever. We get Edgar Costa. Maybe we'll finish Sanchez's scouting before we offer. I'd like to offer to Watkins. Oh, he's not even interested enough, huh? Well, fucking A. Espinoza is interested enough, so I guess we'll make the offer to him. Any sign, so graciously accepting. Happy there. And we'll advance to the next session. And a series against the White Sox as well. Still don't have enough interest to offer. We get Claudio Ramos. And now... Sanchez looks like a solid player. And yeah, disrespecting him again. Not always the way to handle business. Oh, and Watkins will have enough interest. I want to... Skip to the Sunday. I want to get them all signed. Tim Horner is still injured, so keep him on the 15 day. Oh, come on, Sebastian. You're being a prick right now. Oh, what? Kareem Watkins declined. Who is this? Who are these guys? I think they are. Finishing off the series here, and we do beat the White Sox in one game, so they don't sweep us. And look at all these home games, man. We got a lot of home games. Fans, and we do win that game. Time to try to sign him again. And we get Sebastian Sanchez after all that drama. And Kareem Watkins accepts. So now we can focus back on baseball. And we got a game against Drew Rossman here. I saw Lacey pitching. Almonds are another L. How many runs did he give up this game? Gave up five runs. What is going on with Fernando? The Guardians have placed Gavin Williams on the trade block. Wow, what a what a deal that would be.
I just don't know. You got Daniel Espino up here as well. I mean, the guards aren't even that far back from the division, but they're selling on Williams. And I just don't know if I'm willing to pull the trigger on that kind of a deal. Can't even find the Guardians. What is going on? There they are. So to get a guy like... Like Williams, you're going to have to give up... Not much, actually. If all it takes is a Villa and a little bit more, I mean... And with a move like this, Edgar Vargas would probably be the guy that has to go. I mean, he's got tremendous upside. He's a really good young player, but... I'm just not really in on making that kind of move with what we have right now. But let's hop into the game against Rossman, see if we can actually hit the baseball today. Donaldson, 259. Love what I'm seeing out of him. Garcia's hitting 295. Let's get a game in with Luis Garcia and see if we can get some good hits and stuff. Wow, Sam Huff is their starting catcher, or is he just their backup getting some action today? Thinking it's the second one. I don't. If you have Sam Huff as your starting catcher, then that's tough. Tough way. Tough. Tough way. And now, your City Royal. Saw Lacey 9 and 4 this year, under a 4 ERA. Definitely his best season up to now, but a 157 whip, so he does still put people on base a lot. He's the kind of pitcher that a, a hitter wants to face most of the time. Obviously, this year has kind of went his way a little bit more than other seasons have, where his ERA is usually above 5 or not. Uh, Four and a half at the bare minimum. Well, maybe he's maturing into a nice player. And maybe he can fine tune out a lot of his his flaws. Bobby Witt hit an RBI double in front of Garcia, and he is up to hit now. Austin misses high and out of the zone. Just missed a cutter. A little bit out in front. Out it back. Tried to let the ball come in a little bit more, but picked a good pitch to throw there. That's a ball. Two and two now. Got a fast runner ahead of him. All you need is a hit to the outfield. He might score a lit. It looks like maybe a walk is coming. I don't know if you want to walk Garcia with Alvarez on deck, though. And I think Rossman realizes now that he wants to get this out here. But that was the pitch back, and I don't mind taking a walk here. But another good pitch, so we had to swing. Three. Struck us out and just looked at it for too long. Austin Witt gets his second RBI of the game. Garcia. Up in the air to Garcia. 
I mean, not to Garcia, but from Garcia. And Mikel Garcia gets an RBI single. Austin still pitching. And Garcia again, just unable to make great contact. They say okay contact, it's a pretty good swing, but not getting the exit velocity, it seemed like it was underneath a little bit too much. Only the fourth inning, and that was his third at bat. The first base hit, number 22. They saw Lacey still pitching in the sixth inning. And another chance to field here in the sixth inning. And on the ground to Garcia, he swipes and throws. It's him out. Oh for three today. And going against Christian Mena. And just Wow, very fortunate there. Oh, look at that little shuffle we did there at the end. That was pretty weird. Oh, come on, man. A little bit late on the curve, and he popped it up again. Can't seem to make good contact yet today. Got that one good hard ground ball that we hit with Jordan. But now, oh, man, we're going against Felix Batista now. He's only a 79 overall, but he's got his velocity still, and good hit for nine. That one, the best hit of the game, but it's straight to second base, and the second to last out. It looks like our bullpen blew the game. Give up two in the eighth and two in the ninth, and the Snakes win. And it comes off of two two run home runs and a solo home run, so he lost the three home runs. Fun way to lose a game, but nonetheless. And now another injury here. Juan Castro with an injury. Ken Waldachuk in the ninth inning with two outs with Garcia up. Let's try to win the game. Don't do critical situations a lot, but why not try this one and see if I can hit the ball. I mean, haven't even done that yet. Walter Chuck has been turned into a bullpen arm and he is in a tough spot here. Got decent pitch clutch. And we hit one to the outfield. Oh, man. Oh, we did. I thought we fouled it down the line, but the winning run. And Mikel Garcia walks off the snakes. Okay, man, not our best hit, but it stayed in play. I thought it was definitely going foul with the way it came off the bat. Kind of chopped out there weird. Kind of fly slotted that to right field, but I'll take what we can get. And there's a series win. That's the Snakes and Gavin Cross, the player of the game, a free run home run. And almost blew the game again today. Four runs in the ninth inning. What is going on? Who is giving up these runs? Gary Crochet has been struggling, I guess. Moving on, Ben Brown, the pitcher. Seeing him in spring training. Tyler Glasnow, that's 
an interesting matchup there. Chicago up, and we come back and beat them down. Zalman's are pitching again today. And gave up five earn again. What is going on with this guy, bro? He's a frustrating player right now. We're down only once 34 million. Nah, I'm not giving you a longer contract, bro. I mean, it says he wants 34, but kind of telling me to F off with that kind of offer I'm trying to give him. 29 saves and free blown for Duran. What is Duran looking for? He wants 9 mil? Okay. Okay, I'll give him 10 mil. I'm fine with that. Eyes to come back. He only wants 16 million, and that's kind of interesting coming off the year he's having. He's done very well. Lots of quality starts here. Good war. Strikeout per nine is the best. His home run per nine has been down. He's kind of the pitcher that we signed when he had a good breakout year in Detroit, his final year of his original contract, and. Now he's kind of doing it again. I would have to consider that. I mean, I think I'd like him to come back over Hunter Brown. I mean, I like what Hunter Brown's done. 13 quality starts. What is Brown looking for? He only wants 15. It's interesting. You can make a deal with a Donaldson right now. Only one point. What? I think I want to do this deal with Donaldson here. This might be the time. Seven years would get us to age 32. What does he want for 7, 3.1? I mean, you definitely put a lot of pressure on him once you do a kind of deal like this to a young player, but he kind of seems like the real deal, even in limited at-bats. It's kind of a White Sox move, though. It's kind of scary. Maybe I should wait till the year's over, but I'm kind of in on him. It's probably the cheapest I'll get him at this point. You always like to front load. I mean, if he takes it with a club option, I'll, I'll do this. He said he doesn't want to be locked into a contract that long. Does he know how arbitration and all that works? Yeah, I'll give him 22 and a half, and I'm fine with that. Something that is kind of something I never considered doing, but I think it's smart to get ahead on that one. To bring Furman back, he wants 20 mil. And I'm definitely not willing to commit to that. Andrew Vaughn wants to get paid, and he is not happy with Morrell. He has not gotten to play much, and honestly, man. I might look to trade Vaughn at the deadline. But back to baseball here again. Had to handle some business first, but gonna hop into a game with the newly signed Jared Donaldson. Sixty and forty five right now. Definitely a good winning pace, you know, I kind of expected to win a little bit more, but the pitching has kind of let me down in a way that I have not seen yet. But it's definitely something to think about upgrading for sure at the deadline. Usually we need another bat for the lineup, but this year I think the bats are fine, it's the pitching. 
I mean, I'll go with Fernando, but he is giving up five earn at a clip right now, and I'm kind of worried about him. I feel like he just needs to continue to grow, and as his overall goes up, the performance will, but it's kind of a kind of a hindrance to have him there. He's not hitting good enough. There's not really anything in the organization that's better, so it's kind of just there. Out. Batting eight. The first Here's base Jared base. Donaldson against Tyler Glass now. The Cubs are up one to nothing. Oh, come on. I thought that was his curveball. It was a slider. That makes sense now. That piece of hit in there. Eh, only 86 exit velocity though. Just didn't quite time it good enough. He's Donaldson. He's hitless in the series. Witt tied the game off a home run. take there. Ah oh, man, that would have been a good hit with one out and two at a end the inning. I'll say this man, glassnow has got some of the best like pitch and mix in the game. Like his pitches are real nice for a computer pitcher, you know it's Got a fastball that can hit 100. He's got a curveball that hits like 80. A slider that's goes 90. A, a slider that can go 90 to work with your fastball is just it's pretty good if you know how to use it. And that changeup can go 90 as well, which is I think the most impressive part. I don't see an 0 for 2 going against De Los Santos. And the runner going. Not in. He got him. What? The tag is made. I thought he had it, but. I guess that's why I'm not an ump. And Donaldson. Hitless through 7. And we come back and win in the ninth inning. I think maybe Garcia won us the game. I'm not sure how we won, but we do get hits off of Alvarado. And a series win against the Cubs. So after it goes in the first series, we take the next two. And we come back and sweep the Cubs, so putting together some wins, putting some space behind the White Sox. We've seen the big injury to Detroit with Alvarez, and that's kind of knocking them down a lot. They've struggled. Look at the Cleveland Guardians, though. They're almost a 500 baseball team again, and I don't see why they would want to trade their guy. I didn't want to do that, but. Did you change your mind yet, man? I don't even know, actually. I don't think I want to do this shit. Gordon's an interesting choice. I don't know if I want to sign him back or just get the draft pick for him. I think I, I kind of think I want to sign him with the, the way he is right now, but. I'll have to think about it. Almanzar gets to start the first game in August. And 
Trying to hop into another game. Here's Grant Taylor. MJ Melinda's up to 56 RBIs. He's one of the highest on the team. Huh. I like that, man. Wow, his accuracy is one up to 87. I mean, it wasn't his accuracy, though. It was more of his reaction. That's the problem. But let's hop into a game with Melendez. Funny to see Christopher Morale on fire, man. Jim Edmonds, the great center fielder. Dude should be a Hall of Famer, man. He went in on Christopher Morale today. <laughs> Gotta love the old school players versus the new players that just don't honestly give a fuck, you know? <laughs> it's just... It's it's a fun clash to see, you know? You can see both point of views, but... From a third person perspective, it's funny. Sometimes. I think I got all the players in the league. I think that like Cole is probably the most old school guy in there. Hit to the warning track. Freddie Furman gives us a one to nothing lead, and here's MJ Melendez. Hit good again, but it looks like he's going to hit it to the same exact spot as earlier. And they pitched to him well. The designated hitter. The base hits. The left number two forty five. Two to nothing, but Grant Taylor's still out there anyway. Good high fastball. All ones account. Yep, we just can't seem to touch Grant Taylor at this point. Just put a half-hearted swing out there and hit it to fly out to end her top end of the frame. Oh wow, it's Reese Hines. This dude is going ham in real life, man. Hasn't quite attributed to much yet in the video game, but... Who's putting up insane numbers. And facing the left-hander Kai Bush in the ninth inning. Up the middle, base hit for Melendez. Sent it back where it came. That's what you gotta do with the off speed. Now so he does get on base, and it looks like Juan hit him in. And I saw Lacey with a shutout for seven and two thirds. They get the win. Good, good winning there. 
Looking at our double A team, they're off to a tear right now. Omaha, I mean, I, I could probably understand why they struggle, but. Looking at the trade block, did they take? Him off? Or did somebody get him? Nope, they took Gavin Williams off the trade block. Good decision there. I don't f see why you give up on Gavin Williams. They still have Espinel up there, but I'm not really a fan. <laughs> Just not someone I'd I would trade for. I might be interested in signing him maybe if it's for the right price, but trading is a different story. Titleman. Oh, he's pitching for the Dodgers too. I forgot. I mean, for the, for the Guardians. What am I talking about? <laughs> I mean, he doesn't seem bad, but he's not like good enough to replace what we have. Definitely, the most interesting player is Langford. With multiple years of control, you get a good right-handed bat in there, but. You just have nowhere to play the guy, you know. You got Melendez, who already has the high upside, and I'm a big fan of. And then you got Gavin Cross in center. And Stephen Kwan, who still got another year on the deal, and I don't see myself getting rid of him. He's one of our best on-base players, other than Alvarez. Yeah, the advanced numbers for a lot of these players just look too good to really give up on. And I like our bench. I mean, Andrew Vaughn is someone we could trade and maybe get some value for. And I think I might do that. Not in on trading Vaughn to a team that can that can hurt us in the future though. I don't know what kind of team would uh, need a an upgrade. Got the Padres. I mean the Diamondbacks and the Giants as well if they need it, but the Nationals are they're kind of in it. Maybe we trade him to the Nationals then. This would be back to back years trading with the Nationals at the deadline. And they got released Turbo playing or Tora Boyle. Not even sure, but Traded off Vaughn, what would we want to improve then? You know, we'd want a bench bat probably, but I don't know if you're going to get one from these guys. Don't really need pitching prospects. These guys have, they have a ton of outfield. 
prospects though, so maybe a guy like Perez we could add. Don't know if I'm in on adding a right field or a left field prospect. It's, oh, they signed Stan? Huh. At Felipe Cordero. This dude's got a cannon. And it's a switch hitter. Huh. Kind of an interesting player. Rose left, but he's already 24. I don't know. I don't know if they have what we'd want. I mean, we could run the trade finder and see what they they say. I mean, Vaughn's value isn't that high either. He's not hitting the best. Offer an offer, Hag, Jorge Vasquez, and Ramon Reyna. I mean, if I would be interested in Vasquez, but uh, it's just around the range of our other guys. So he's not really capable of taking that next step. I love Keeper Ruiz, but he's obviously fueling them into the run that they're having. I would love to add Keeper to the team. That's just stealing at this point, though. I think I'm just gonna have to move on. Yeah, the Diamondbacks could definitely upgrade off of Smith. Maybe the Diamondbacks have more of what we want. Uh, not so. Forty overall with Merrifield, huh? We got Ruben Bridges in the pipeline. He's just not f developed hard enough. So I don't know. I think I'm just gonna keep keep uh, Vaughn because I don't know what else to do. I mean, Vaughn's not happy, but I don't know who is happy these days. <laughs> Where is it in 289? Is it time for him to go back up to AAA or? Our triple-A hitters suck, man. We have nobody up there. Roshi Fong up to a 68 overall. Might as well just advance that for today. So we sweep. Well, we get two wins, so we win the series. Ben Rainey, Nixon Lane hits 355. Louis Yoder, 250. Pete Washington, a .91 ERA. And you got Walter Wannabe. Having a good month. Oh, yeah, actually. Joel Fong might be on his way back up. Uh, double A. Maybe I'll just keep him down here the rest of the year.
Oh, Mitchell Parker sucks. Chris Fallout is 239, man. We just cannot seem to get his bat on track. And the thing that he's good at, he's struggling at now. That's annoying. Makes a nine up to 280. Just a disgusting young hitter. Tim Wells, being Tim Wells, just not putting it together quite yet. Roshi Fong, having his best year so far. Definitely coming along now. New to Odell, only 13 innings. Vargas up to a 69, but obviously the potential is dropping. Juan Castro up to a 69. These guys are definitely almost triple-A ready. You got Pete Washington, who I think I do want to see up in triple-A pretty soon, and Santana. Definitely still has to earn it. What? Negative eight power left? What is going on? Come on, man. Like, Ferrara has to be one of the most frustrating prospects I've ever dealt with in this game. I knew he was a project, but I didn't think he was a four-year project. But it's been a tough going. I want to get a game in here with Esteban Tejada, though. Bronson Aaron not developing at the fastest pace either. But time to use Tejada here. Here's Charlie Soto against Esteban Tejada. Change up there for Tejada. Good by him, 95. One ball, two strikes. Ball, two, two. Yeah, let's go, kid. Took strike three on the outside part of the plate. He's not happy. And by Tejada. I'm pretty sure Chad Bennett makes that play. Not trying to compare, but <laughs> I'd like to see him be able to feel that play. And this is going to not be a double play anyway. Wasn't good either. Down four to nothing. Here's Charlie Soto against Tejada again. Soto having his way. Oh, 
Oh. Making it pretty easy for him to. And a can of corn to the third baseman. Now batting. It's four to one, but it's Soto again. That one driven into the gap, and there's a base hit, and this is going to be a double. And a runner going home. He's safe, so the, run, the lead has been cut in half. And Carrara hits Tata in. And here's Jared Fontenot. Tata, a very easy fielded ball here. I don't know, Tata might be more of a second base kind of guy though with his arm. And obviously he's still growing, but... It's interesting. Yep. Oh one. Good pitch there on the lower edge. That's where you want those changeups to go. Tahada couldn't quite sneak a base hit on the line. Good job just fouling that pitch away to stay alive. And he struck him out with a good changeup. Win surge, get the win. Danny Mantle is the player of the game. And it's Fernando Day, and he broke his arm. A second injury to a rookie pitcher, man. He went four innings, and he broke his arm. And now, not trading for someone at the deadline has really killed us in the end. Wow, that's like a shot in the in the foot there. I think you just bring Leander right back up. I mean, we have burned the option on Collier. We could get a feel for him, but I don't know if it's time for him to join the roster or not. He's kind of struggling in AAA. Got Dick Harding, who also got the option burned, and that pitch coach, he seems like he could be another Al Manzar. I think I want to be a little bit more patient with Harding. Want him to be a little bit more further developed. Miguel Lopez, you used the option on him as well, and it's interesting, but I don't think he's quite ready either. Could add Mason Barnett to the 40 man roster and let him make his debut, but I mean, it's just, I don't know. I think Avila's, I mean, he's pitched up here before. I don't know, this is a tough decision to make here. Like compare
compared to how almonds are, how do they, they look? It's interesting if you call up Collier or Harding. Definitely is interesting. It's just if you call them up, you gotta send them back down, perhaps. I mean, Almanzar is gonna be gone. And he might, that might be a season ending injury almost. We got one to two months, and we're in the month of August, so he might not be back the rest of the year. So I think what are the advanced numbers like on Collier? Like you don't really get to see it much. You get ten quality starts out of twenty-one games. And then with Harding. I guess you want to look at the stats here. You know, when it go by whip. Walter Wannabe, he is improving. He is very close himself. Very happy with him. I mean, Harding's got the best whip for starting pitchers. Has walked the second most people though. He's gotten the most strikeouts too. The most quality starts. He's let up the second most home runs though, even with that high home run per nine. The FIP isn't terrible. Man, I didn't think this was going to happen today. I just, I don't know, man. I don't, it's not time. I want to give him more time. I'm I'm bringing up Leander. I just wasted all that time to do that, I know. But. I talked myself out of it. Move Nathan Webb up to AAA. We don't have anything else we could do with that matter. Oh, why is Elvis Ruiz coming out of the bullpen? Oh, this is perfect. I didn't even know we had him. Guess we just never fixed that. Oh well. Anyway, going up against Adam Gold. I'm ready to play. I know we can look at the draft picks, but I want to get another player lock game in here with Jared Donaldson. We'll see if we can do something good against a decent pitcher in Adam Gold. Twenty wins above five hundred. Definitely putting it together the wins here when that matters the most. And without our worst pitcher, we might actually do better without Almond's heart, which is sad. I, just, I thought he had a chance to win the rookie of the year along with Double M, but both of them have now been injured for long periods of time. And the bad luck blues have hit us when it comes to that this year with the injuries. But Gotta hope that it stops soon. Here's Adam Gold. Pretty solid pitcher. Not had a, a terrible year at any stretch, and he's their fifth guy. So you got to be happy if you're Detroit. Yes. 
Number five first base prospect. And we fouled it back. Comes it outside again. And he put it in play. Not quite going to be able to fall for him. And the bases are loaded for Donaldson. Wow. What a strike. Wow, again, you can get fooled on that one. See, when you throw good strikes here, you can fool people on the next one. And he punches out with the bases loaded. I'm just disgusted. That whole at bat went wrong after that first pitch strike. Here's McFarland. Ah, oh, come on. One ball, two straight. Man, I suck today, I'll tell you what. This might be the worst video of the series. <laughs> yep. Let's make it worse, I guess. Come on, man. <laughs> what the heck? It's Casey Mize. He always seems to get games in against Detroit. A punt. Garcia throws it. You got him. Good play from Garcia. It's Donaldson against McFarland again. Oh, man. And another punch out for Donaldson. Oh for four tonight. With multiple strikeouts. And now facing Yuan Adon. And you can always get a hit off Adon, but even Donaldson can't do that, so. Pretty bad showcase on a skill level for me, but everybody else on the team. Did what a good team does. Your teammate has a bad game. You have a good game to pick them up. That's team. That's team sports for you right there. And now the moment of truth. I'm kind of worried. But let's see. 84 potential for Goodwin. But he's pretty good at 18. But... Oh, yeah. We have to go this way. I want to see... Rosario was not as good, so I think I did make the right choice. He is a 73 overall, and he only goes up to 83. I'm not upset at all then on what I did. But anyway, let's get back to it. Um, Got Costa here. He's 19. He comes in pretty solid. I mean, the hit per nine, we knew it was kind of going to be low, but it does project to be a lot better. Like his stuff. That was a good mix. You got Claudio Ramos, who we got to pick 100, and he's got the highest potential of the class. 88. 
He's obviously another project first baseman that we just seem to love drafting. But this one bats left-handed. Big difference. And I, I think he could be all right. I mean, a couple years down the pipe, you know, we might be seeing Ramos. I hope he develops well. Got Kareem Watkins, 57 overall at 20 years old. Not the most furthest along, but he can hit off the rip. He can play a lot of positions. I'm a fan. I like him. He's cool. Now, that's another thing. Let's look at durability. 62 durability. And 47. Why can we not get people that are durable? <laughs> They say low injury risk, but even then, they still have terrible durability. I don't know. Sanchez does have good durability. Only 76 potential. The hits per nine is kind of scary. I don't know. He can... Maybe we turn him into a bullpen arm. And kind of just work on the pitch clutch and kind of turn him into one of those kind of players. Edgar Espinel is a little bit better than Sanchez and a little bit lower overall. So more room to grow for him. But he's a six-round pick. So obviously this isn't the best draft, but it's not terrible, you know. It, could have been worse. We did pick pretty high in the draft. I mean, pretty low in the draft. <laughs> so, let's see the number one pick. The White Sox with the number one selection took Gene Gura. 66 overall at 21 years old. Only 85 potential, but not the worst number one overall pick they've made in this series for sure. They take another closing pitcher. This is like the fourth one they've taken. And he's got 80 potential. Not the best draft in here from the White Sox. Unless this class wasn't good. This is not the best draft when you have the first pick. Here's Cleveland. Keenan Minoso from Venezuela. I think I remember seeing the Venezuela kid, but just not wanting to scout him. And he had 94 potential at 21, so. Obviously a player that fits into what they try to do. And he'll, he'll be well for them in the future. We'll definitely be seeing him. Charlie Lombardo. Pitcher from California. He's not a two-way player. Always try to check. I mean, Arden's got a chance, but only 78 potential. Lincoln Montgomery, only 71 overall, so I'm glad I did not do that. Alberto Carvala, not good either. Take a good closer, but this draft by Detroit, not the best. Looking at the Twins, wow. 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 Ronald Coronado. 95 potential very later on in the draft. And Twins made a good choice here. Todd Beam. Not the best. Wasn't that high on him. Just don't like seeing them get players. They took Matthew Nixon, who they probably found out wasn't that good. Wow, Charles Poles had 89 potential. When I looked at him, he didn't look that good. Huh, they got us twice here. And I did look at Poles, and he didn't look all that promising when I was scouting him, but he's actually good. Garcia, we were in on him. But he went to the Astros. I think we were in on him. Wow, Brian Barron. 99 potential from Jamaica. Wow. 
I'm pretty sure they picked ahead of us, but wow. They had to have. I didn't think Brian Barron was that good. But I didn't know Brian Barron was this good after looking at him, but wow, what a pick. 99 potential. The Angels' future continues to look brighter. Errol Faraday. I guess you can make the argument that Faraday should have been the guy. And the Athletics took him from us. And he's a 91 potential. Richard McGee. 90 potential. 88 for Chris Franco, and I was in on Franco, and I didn't take him. I had chances. I passed on Franco, and feel foolish now. Andy Corona definitely wanted the draft. They had a good draft. They took Tejada, too, and I definitely scouted Tejada. So, yeah, they had a killer draft. Dixon was on my board as well. They, they killed it. Hey, they, they killed it. They definitely have had the best draft so far. Guadalupe Gill, he was not good. Wow. Anzo Estrella. Some bad drafting out of these teams. Charles Hernandez. Juan Batista. Nothing but pitchers this draft from the Braves. Pretty interesting. He's near Quintero. He got picked before us, and he definitely would have been in consideration, definitely when it comes to best player available, but he got snatched, and he was, he was pretty solid. 91 potential. J.J. McGee. And the Mets got a good one. Definitely looks pretty promising. Matt Sherman. Not bad. Wow, Victor Bourbon. We definitely contemplated too, and yeah, he might have been the better pick over good one. But who knows? I mean we needed pitching, so Wow, Jonathan Bush. I, I kind of had a figure that he was generational. I obviously had no chance of drafting him. Wish I was the worst team to get a player like this, man. But, wow, the Cubs just got a generational player with like the 10th overall pick. But I picked him 7th. Dirk Roosh, 91 potential. So the Cubs and the Angels with two 99 players in this draft Kiki Montana Forrest McDermott not too bad Ricky McGraw, he was ranked high on our board. He's not super good, though. I mean, he was ranked 10th, but we didn't scout him fully. Rondo Hargrove went, and we definitely made a better choice with who we took. And probably the biggest bust in the first round, Miguel Merced. We knew very early on wasn't the best. Elvis Navarro was decent, though. That's another player we let still play. David Ashley was someone I scouted and fall in love with. Eric Ullman, not the best. But you get Marshall Eller. So that's a pretty good selection there from Mexico. He could play a lot of positions. 93 potential. And that'd be cool to play around with Carrara and all that but and Darrell Cortez he was better than the guy we took too and I believe yeah we 
we did not take Cortez and definitely missed out on this right here. Our valuation just failed and yeah, I think we definitely should have took Cortez. Definitely had a chance. Freddie Wilkes, 75. Jose Rodriguez with 91 potential, but I mean, no, there's really no buts actually. He's, he's pretty decent to start. DeAndre Kowalski, a very good player, 67 overall. Ken Ramos. And we've seen Joaquim Rosario. I think Motel was someone that we wanted too, but they took him. Orlando Moody. Glad we didn't take him. And the New York Yankees with one of the worst drafts too. They picked pretty high and a lot of misses here. And a ton of misses here from the Rays. 49 overall in the first round. It's a tough pill. And the whole ALE seems to drop the ball. Other than Baltimore, obviously. But. Yeah, so not our best draft. Obviously, we didn't win the draft, but we picked 24. I think we did all right. Obviously, I think the best value we got, Claudio Ramos here with the 100th pick. And obviously, I like, I definitely like Kareem Watkins. I like his skill set. He'll be a fun player to try to get up there, maybe be a bench bat. And Costa definitely has a chance the way he is. And obviously we'll give Goodwin plenty of chances, so. But that'll do it for this one and hope y'all have a good one.